What's going on guys, welcome to another Doctor Who video. Today we're going to be doing something maybe a little bit different. This is kind of more of a discussion video instead of a review or like a ranking video. Today I'm going to be talking about what I want from series 12 of Doctor Who. So series 11 is over now, we've had the whole of series 11 and we've also had the New Year's special which um, is kind of part of series 11 but also is apparently kind of part of series 12, I don't really know, it's kind of just in the middle there. Um, but yeah, series 11's over so now I wanted to talk about series 12 and what I want from the series, you know, after, now that we've kind of seen what series 11 has to offer, what Chibnall has to offer, what Jodie Whittaker and the whole cast have to offer, I thought now would be a good time to say, to kind of you know, talk about things in it and then say what they can improve on, what, you know, things they can do better in the next series. So let's get started. So the first thing is, let's have less stories written by Chris Chibnall. Um, I do think, you know, Chris Chibnall is obviously the head writer, the showrunner for the series now, um, from series 11 for however long he decides to stay on, at least series 11 and 12. So, you know, originally it was Ross C. Davis, then it was Stephen Moffat, now we've got Chris Chibnall, and, you know, the head writers, the showrunners, always write the most episodes. They always seem to write the first episode of the series and the last episode of the series, and then maybe one, or maybe two, usually just like one in between. They might also, you know, co-write with someone else in the middle of the series, um, but, you know, on the whole, you know, they do write the most episodes themselves, but there's actually more episodes throughout the series usually written by other people, um, if you know what I mean. However, with Chris Chibnall, it was a bit different with Series 11. Of course, Series 11 was only 10 episodes, where previously it was 12 episodes, and even before that, 13 episodes in a series. Well, now we're down to 10 episodes for Series 11, and I push a dream for Series 12. I don't think that's actually really been announced yet, whether it will be another 10 episode series, but I have a feeling it probably will be. Um... And out of those 10 episodes, um, well, let me think, five, that was six, I think six of them were written by Chris Chibnall, five were written just individually, just by Chris Chibnall, and then I believe there was one, which was Rosa, which was co-written with someone else, um, so yeah, he, Chris Chibnall contributed in the, you know, in the credits as a writer for more than half of series 11. And I think that was an issue, especially when you look at the episodes he wrote and realize that he actually wrote some of the weakest episodes in the series. Um, so that is a bit disappointing. And I think that in itself, especially if we're gonna go for a 10 episode series again, I think that Chris Chibnall, I reckon he should, even though I'm not really happy with how he writes stuff, and a lot of people aren't, I still think because he's the showrunner, he's the head writer, he should write the opener to series 12 and he should write the finale to series 12 because he's the head writer um, and then maybe I'd say maybe he can either um, do an episode you know himself or co-write an episode in the middle of the series somewhere I think a maximum of three episodes with Chris Chibnall's name in the in the credit is is fine any more than three and we're kind of like we'd like to see some more writers so um yeah I do think we need less Chris Chibnall in this series also on writers, uh, the second thing I wanted to say is um, we want returning writers from earlier series. One thing about series 11 was that um, apart from Chris Chibnall who had written a couple of episodes in previous series, every other writer had never written for Doctor Who before. They were all new writers. Um, and I do like that in a way. And to be honest, some of the better episodes of the series, like I said, they were written by these guest writers. However, I would still like to see some returning writers from series 1 to 10. So I have actually put a few down here that I'd like to see return. Firstly, Robert Shearman, he only wrote one episode, as far as I can tell, which was Dalek for series 1. He hasn't returned since. I'd love to see him return and make another episode because Dalek is amazing. Um, Toby Whithouse is another great writer, you know, wrote some great ones like School Reunion, A Town Called Mercy, he wrote the um, Under the Lake Before the Flood two-parter, so Toby Whithouse also has a lot of really good episodes that he's written, um, so I'd love to see him return. Uh, Matt Jones, who just wrote The Impossible Planet Satan Pit, two parts from Series 2, another story that I really, really love. It's one of my favourite David Tennant stories, one of my favourite stories of New Who altogether. I'd love to see him make a return. Um, Paul Cornell, who wrote Father's Day and The Human Nature Family of Blood, two parter. Really, really good stories there as well. I mean, Father's Day is not amazing, but it is still a pretty good story, I think. Um, 
But yeah, Human, Human Nature Family of Blood is a fantastic two-part story. I'd love to see him return. And then finally, Jamie Matheson, who is a little bit on the nose in some ways. I mean, he wrote some great stuff like Mummy on the Orient Express, Flatline, and Oxygen. Some of the best series um, episodes from... Um, Peter Capaldi's run in my opinion um, however he did also write um, I believe he wrote The Girl Who Died which wasn't great um, I think was it him who also wrote Lie of the Land or was that Toby Whithouse one of them one of those two uh, I believe did also write Lie of the Land um, so you know there's a couple of duds in there but on the whole those are really good writers and I'd love to see them return next up we've got more returning villains Another thing that I think Series 11 didn't really do too well was not having any returning villains um, until Resolution, the New Year special, where we got the Daleks. But um, in the actual series itself, we didn't have any returning villains from series from previous series, not even the classic series. Um, so I'd love to see some villains return. I mean, options for returning villains? I think the Cybermen could return. Yes, we only had them in Series 10, but I think, you know, you could probably do something with them. I wouldn't say bring back the Daleks for Series 12. I think wait till see at least Series 13 for that, but I don't know what they'll do with that. Um, the Sontarans, I think, would be a really good villain to bring back. They, they kind of, you know, they haven't done a good Sontaran story well, I mean, they haven't done a Sontaran story, really, since uh, Series 4. Um, and I'd love to see the Menace come back for the Sontarans, because at the moment they're just kind of a little bit of a joke. So that would be good to see. Um, I think the Vashti and Arada are a great one-off villain that I think could be um, expanded upon and done some good stuff with, so I'd like to see them again. The Silurians and the Sea Devils, mainly the Sea Devils, because we had the Silurians um, in Series 5. Um... And, you know, I'd love to see the Sea Devils come back from the classic series. I think that you could do something with them. And then the Weeping Angels is a bit kind of... They, maybe? I can't really personally think of anything else you can really do with the Weeping Angels. Um, I think that every subsequent appearance of the Weeping Angels, they've got worse as time goes on. Um, you know, in each episode. I think they were definitely the best when they started in Blink, and they're probably at their worst in Angels Take Manhattan, but I still think, you know, they might be able to do something with them. Um, so if they can think of something interesting and different to do with the Weeping Angels, I'd definitely like to see them back. On to a couple of kind of shorter things to talk about here. Firstly, more exciting and less dialogue focused stories. This is a big one. One of my main issues with series 11 was that there was way too much talking, just unnecessary talking, and not enough action. We need action in Doctor Who that at least for me that makes it quite enjoyable just listening to people talk all the time gets really old so just some more action-packed stories I think and also just that goes with the villains as well though because I think a lot of the reason for these ones not being the most action-packed was because these villains weren't really that great from series 11 so we just need some better villains even if they're not returning villains we just need better villains than we got in series 11 and a bit more action and that will definitely keep a lot of people I think entertained more um get rid of the cringy talk for example you know the whole me and my mates thing which I don't mind too much but it's the main one fam that I don't like I do not like the whole fam thing I really think they should get rid of that it sounds absolutely ridiculous um so yeah get rid of the fam thing they one kind of appearance of it wasn't too bad but they kept on kind of saying it throughout the whole series it popped up here and there and I just absolutely hated it so get rid of the fam thing and just all the cringy talk in general really and then my final point is I think they should get rid of one of the companions um three companions I think it was it was interesting to see what they could do with it but ultimately, I think Three Companions was too much. Um, and honestly, at this current point in time, if I was to say which companion to get rid of, I would say Yaz, because she was really underutilized in Series 11. Graham, and I say definitely don't get rid of Graham, because he's my favorite, and pretty much everyone's favorite. Ryan's also pretty good as well, alongside Graham. So I think if you're going to get rid of one of them, get rid of Yaz. I'm worried that in Series 12, they're going to focus more on Yaz, and then leave the other two in the dark, and I don't want that to happen. Um, yes, we'll have decent, decent character development for all of them then, but, you know, for that series, you're going to have two characters, or at least one character in the dark again, and we're going to be focusing more on Yaz. I think, just get rid of Yaz at the start of the series, carry on with um, Graham and Ryan, and it'll be much better because of it. But yeah, that's pretty much everything I wanted to say in this video. As for like political correctness stuff, you know, everybody's going on saying Series 11's too PC and stuff. And in a way, I kind of see that, but it doesn't bother me as much. There are a couple of things that do annoy me, and I do think they are going a bit too PC overboard with it. But on the whole, it doesn't really bother me, that sort of stuff. Um, if they don't dig into it too much, and I don't think they've dug into it 
too much they've dug into it a bit too much but not not overly much um so that doesn't really bother me too much but um yeah i mean on the whole i think series 12 if they follow some of these rules some of these guidelines and kind of you know just make the series a bit more exciting if anything um it could be a decent series but anyway that's gonna be it for this video guys thank you very much for watching if you enjoyed please go ahead like and subscribe and i'll see you guys in the next video